So uh, as we were discussing uh, parameters of aircraft are going to play a role in uh, changing the eigenvalues location of the eigenvalues on the complex plane right. So uh, we were uh, in the last class discussing the effect of changing uh, the CG uh, we are moving it aft so that the starting, starting margin is going down and we want to see the effect of that on the location of the eigenvalues. The effect of stability derivatives on the longitudinal modes right what we want to look at is how the short period and the fugoid mode eigenvalues are moving when we are changing something so the variation uh, in the direction of the arrow is you know, cg is moving up So to start with my CG is at some place and then I start moving the CG backward right towards the neutral point. So static margin is going to decrease right. So let us see what happens to the Pugait mode eigenvalues and the short period the more diagonal values. So we are changing CM alpha, isn't it? So when you are changing CM alpha, what is going to change? The short period frequency, right? We got an approximate. Uh, formula for this as this was this was uh, uh, for the case when we were looking only at the uh, constraint pitching moments, uh, motion so uh, and plus something right plus something that is coming from the uh, z alpha term We want to, yeah. So, effect of uh, changing CM alpha is going to be on the short period frequency, right? And what is happening here? Exactly the same. So, damping is constant because we are at the same location on the real axis, right? And the roots are moving in the direction of the arrow vertically so the frequency is decreasing right and once it reaches here it splits like thus let us look at what is happening to the fugoid mode no you will not expect uh, the fugoid eigenvalues to change right because of CM alpha term but changing CG is also going to change something else right or uh, in other words 
no as I said short period uh, motion and the fugoid motion are coupled so uh, the short period mode is going to have an effect on the fugoid mode that is what we uh, discussed yesterday so <coughs> fugoid mode eigenvalues are also going to move when we change the CG. Okay. So you can go on actually doing this no change some parameter see the effect of that on the location of the eigenvalues this this, this is called uh, root locus okay when you change parameter of the system and look at how the roots are moving the <coughs> trajectory of the roots in the complex plane is known as root locus so let us look at uh, one more effect of one more parameter on these two eigenvalues remember there are things which you can change right and there are things which you cannot so two of the things that uh, are kind of you know still in the hand of the designer if you have a tail you now wing sizing will depend upon the performance requirements right tail sizing is usually depending upon the stability requirements so here uh, I am showing you the effect of those parameters on these two eigenvalues which are still under control right you can still design your uh, horizontal tail area you can make it bigger or smaller and you can change the CG definitely because you can have dead weight inside your aircraft which can be moved to change the CG and you also would want to look at the, the you know, location of these eigenvalues when passengers are moving on the aircraft so this plot gives you that information let's look at the horizontal tail area or effect of changing that on the longitudinal mode eigen values what is tail area going to do if you increase the tail area it is going to no, it appears somewhere in the expression for CM alpha remember when we added tail we increased CM alpha so tail is also this horizontal tail is also known as stabilizer okay, so you are adding to the CM alpha what else remember we also defined the damping term with respect to the tail coming from the pitch rate right yeah what is it okay so we are coming to that so it is going to So frequency is going to become what higher and damping
it will also be higher so it is going to move in this direction. But fugoid effect of that is also to change the fugoid frequency, right? So fugoid frequency becomes large, and the time period becomes small. No, usually you don't worry about the fugoid if you have a really good pilot setting inside the aircraft, no, because he can take care of that. You can you can apply corrective actions to uh, control the aircraft in fugoid because the time period involved is very large, right? But if such a thing happens then you are going to lose that advantage no, frequency is going up so time period is going to be uh, smaller right. So the problem uh, uh, associated are these no, if, if the damping is low in short period then controlling the motion is going to be difficult right low damping uh, in any motion is going to be difficult to control. Right. Fugoid, no, this, this is related to the pitching motion. Short period mode diagonal is related to, related to the pitching motion of the aircraft. So, uh, if it is not damping fast, right, then this pitching motion is going to last longer, and I am sure you are not going to like it when you are sitting in such an aircraft, right, which is doing this and it is taking longer to settle. Fugoid uh, is a long period motion even though a, a pilot can control it you know, it can become really tiring for the pilot right. So there we actually uh, start talking about pilot comfort with the aircraft right and uh, that is related to the flying quality of the aircraft okay flying or handling so there is a scale huh? the scale of Cooper Harper scale uh, on a scale of 1 to 10 now it tells you uh, what kind of quality your aircraft is having okay. So this uh, uh, on 1, on 1 to 10 scale if the rating is 1 then your aircraft is excellent okay in terms of satisfying the pilot in terms of all other requirements. If it is 10 then you better go back and change something in your design or maybe you change a design control system which can add to the flying and handling qualities. So this rating 1 1 means excellent flying and 10 is when it is really bad and you uh, recommend mandatory improvement. actually 7 to 10 is objectionable and 
uh, it relates to major deficiencies. And this rating is based on three different uh, criteria. So these criteria are you know, depending upon pilot's input, how much pilot workload goes up or you know, how comfortable pilot feels operating the airplane. So it, there are three levels which relate to you know, pilot workload. So level 1 is if your aircraft falls in this category level 1 uh, or this level because category is uh, another thing here then you have adequate adequate flying qualities you no know, pilot feels really good about flying this aircraft So this airplane can be flown uh, comfortably by the pilot but only at the cost of increased pilot workload. <coughs> Level 3 is Airplane can be controlled and flown safe, but pilot workload is excessive. It also depends upon what uh, category of aircraft you are talking about. So, category uh, is based upon the um, phase of flight, okay, maneuvering uh, phase of flight. Category A and B are related to non terminal phase of flight. So, these two categories are related to. Uh, What does this mean? So, you are not talking about flights which are uh, uh, 
related to ending the flight or no, beginning of the flight so non terminal phases of flight so it's about maneuvering right so category 1 is related to rapid maneuvering high performance uh, aircraft for the maneuvers <coughs> category b is related to gradual maneuvers uh, and these maneuvers are uh, it can be cruise turn lighter and so on category c is related to the non uh, the terminal flight phases and in this uh, case take off climb approach to land no? All right. now what kind of aircraft we are talking about that is not clear is not it so far we did not talk about the type of aircraft you have four classes of airplanes so in class 1 small <coughs> light so class 1 belongs to this small light airplanes class Two is medium weight Remember, you are going to see all, all kind of airplanes, no, all variants. For example, if you are <coughs> flying cross Atlantic, you are flying in a Boeing 747, right? Capacity 400 plus, right? In India, within the country, you are flying, you are flying in a, no, 100, 120 seater. If you are flying uh, from, uh, let's say, Delhi to Kanpur, so short distance, you are going to see some. Uh, airplane with only 20 passengers capacity sitting capacity right so you have different class of airplanes now other than uh, combat and non -com non combat aircraft you have these classes also
So class 4 is the class belonging to the <coughs> combat uh, fighter airplanes. No, now how do I no, define this rating in terms of level category and class of airplanes no, that is what we should <coughs> talk about and the only thing that I worry about is the Eigen value right because that is what is going to uh, tell me about the aircraft behavior about a perturbed behavior about an equilibrium state right. So let us look at uh, uh, the flying and handling qualities keeping these three uh, types in mind. Let us talk about longitudinal These qualities I want to define in terms of the damping and the frequency characteristic of the longitudinal modes. So you have good flying quality in fugoid mode no, under these levels and the damping ratio is level 1 if it is greater than no, 0 0.04 then you have good fugoid characteristic right. Level 2 the damping should be positive. Level 3 it def is defined in terms of the time period okay, and this should be greater than 55 seconds right. So even if you have a, a divergent fugoid mode that is the uh, that is unstable fugoid mode right then you should have the time period of you know, doubling the amplitude uh, yeah, the the time of doubling the amplitude right, should be more than 55 seconds. And this is this is true for all category of flight phases and all all class of airplanes, right? Here, uh, uh, the quality is depending upon both level and the category of airplanes, a category of uh, flight phases.
these numbers are standardized okay so you you will find uh, these numbers same in all the textbooks they are not going to be different what this means is it's not given okay for this level Okay, so with this we uh, conclude our longitudinal perturbed dynamics. Let's look at perturbed lateral motions now. Okay, so what is happening is <coughs> we are again considering the same equilibrium flying condition and uh, now we are not bothered about what is happening in the longitudinal plane right now we want to look at uh, uh, dynamics in the non longitudinal planes right mm. so aircraft is flying the screws condition right and uh, gust will hit the aircraft as usual and uh, you want to look at the perturbed motion so motion is going to be in roll right and uh, yaw side slip right uh, and the bank is no bank is associated with the roll so the <coughs> variable of interest here are delta beta delta p delta phi and delta r right so my state variable vector the perturbed state variable vector is now consisting of these four <coughs> variables and the control vector is consisting of perturbation in alon and perturbation in rudder right so we are looking at uh, uh, longitudinal and non longitudinal dynamics as completely decoupled and that will happen only in this particular flying condition if you are talking about uh, let's say level turn then it may not be uh, decoupled right okay <coughs> the dynamic modes the perturbed right dynamic modes are related to the perturbed motion of aircraft from the equilibrium state so dynamic modes here are <coughs> dutch roll second is roll now dutch roll is different from roll okay it appears to be rolling but it's not actually rolling that's why this name and spiral if you look at the location of diagonal values corresponding to these modes in the complex plane
typically they are located like thus okay so pair of complex conjugate eigen value and two real eigen values right many times this mode which is called spiral mode eigen value can be lying also on the other side right so other side if it is lying is like a divergent mode right so if it is lying on this side then you have a, a motion called spiral divergent motion this pair of complex conjugate eigen values is related to the dutch roll motion okay. and this eigen value is related to the roll mode so you see here that uh, this eigen value is actually lying quite far from these three right so we can you know kind of assume that this particular motion is decoupled from the rest right and based on that we can now make some approximation okay so before uh, we go into doing that let's try to uh, understand what a des designer would be worrying about okay when he is talking about lateral motions what is exactly in his mind a designer will be worried about the divergent uh, motion right unstable motions of aircraft he has to ensure that aircraft is stable right to start with now if it is unstable how unstable it is right so <coughs> these are three uh, modes of motion in lateral directional dynamics which the designer uh, has to keep in mind okay <coughs> let's try to understand what these motions are so you are flying you are still flying a cruise condition and now you have a gust from side so there is a change in side slip and that will change that will result into the perturbed motion of the aircraft so you are flying in this actually on this line uh, at some altitude you are flying along this line with velocity vector in this direction right and flying level so altitude is fixed now uh, wings are level right so let's see what happens with respect to some of the parameters that we have already uh, seen earlier if the aircraft is at 
having low C n beta okay so small C n beta what it will what effect that will have on the aircraft motion so a perturbation is introduced the C n beta will not be enough to kill that delta beta right so aircraft will start going on a curved path which is like this and the beta will keep on increasing okay that delta beta will keep on growing and finally your aircraft will be flying like this right so it the beta has grown ideally it should have killed the beta if it had enough c n beta it should have killed the beta but the velocity vector is in this direction now and aircraft is looking somewhere else so that means the there is a beta introduced right so there is a non zero side slip which can be large if you keep on going if you don't correct it in time and this is related to this motion is called directional divergence So there is another situation when you have enough C n beta, but you have low C l beta, right? In that case, what happens is aircraft still follows a curved path, but it's able to kill that. beta because it has large stiffness in your right so now it will follow the the velocity vector right so beta is zero all the time but because of the cl beta which is low is going to give rise to a rolling motion right so slowly is uh, the aircraft is actually is uh, is killing the beta so it's moving like this but it's also turning right and because the bank is introduced now you will have a, a left component which will be lower than the weight so it will also start going down right so steeper bank and is going down so it's going into a spiraling motion about a vertical axis so this is called the spiral divergence all right this dutch roll motion is a predominant in beta and r okay actually there is not much roll involved it looks like it appears that the aircraft is rolling but it's actually not rolling so what is happening here is a uh, <coughs> look at this so you are yawing right so you have a yaw rate r which is non zero you are yawing and you are also side slipping you now these two are two different things yawing is a a pure yawing is rotation about the z axis right beta is the angle that is making uh, that is making with the velocity vector the nose of the aircraft the angle that it makes with the velocity vector is the side slip angle so it will it will do this no uh, but go like this right so it's doing this in one direction in the other direction is this and going like this so it's like uh, 
something like this right so it appears that you know because of that motion it appears that it's rolling uh, look at uh, this if i can put it correctly uh, maybe it, uh, it needs a little practice something like this so it looks like it's rolling okay? but uh, uh, it's not really rolling but there is some amount uh, very little amount of roll involved that's not supposed to be a closed loop thing yeah this this is what actually we observe in uh, in flight so it looks like this is the wing of the wing tip of the aircraft is making some curve closed curve uh, which we observed this time so that is where you know uh, when you now uh, make assumptions that is only involves it only involves beta and r and then arrive at uh, the approximate formula you will find that that formula is not really correct so there is some amount of roll involved and that will uh, discuss in the next class so we can st stop